Hi, glad to have you with me today. I'm Jeff Flance from Picasso Piano Academy. So this is the fourth video in a series of 12 regarding major scales. So far we've learned the C scale, G scale, D scale. Today we're gonna to be working on the A scale. Now, why do I think it's so important to learn scales? Well, if you learn how to play all 12 scales, four octaves up and back with ease, you will pretty much have mastered what you need to know about technique. If you understand how scales are built, then you're on your way to understanding theory. And if you can hear the scale degree of any scale, if you can either hear the scale degree and know what it's gonna sound like before you play it, or if you can hear somebody playing it and you understand the scale degree, all you need to know is what key they're operating in to be able to pick out the note. And ultimately, then play what you hear, hear what you play, and, and have a very good ear. So anyway, let's get to it. Here's the A major scale. Four octaves up and back with both hands. And for those of you who would like to, just download a PDF, follow the link in the description below, and you can follow along this lesson. Okay, here we go, A major scale. Okay, so that's what it looks like and sounds like. And as far as fingerings, you can either check what I was doing on fingerings or it is on the PDF, okay? Now, uh, how does the A major scale differ from the other three you've learned? Well, if you look at the circle of fifths, you'll notice that at 12 o'clock, that's the scale of no sharps and no flats. It's the scale of C major. Then you move clockwise to the one o'clock position, and that's the scale of one sharp, G major. Keep on going to the two o'clock position. That's the scale of two sharps, which is the key of D. Then you go around to the three o'clock position. That is the scale of three sharps, and that's what we're working on today, A major scale. So a quick recap. Um, when you're in the key of C, obviously, all white notes, okay? But now, if you walk up a fifth, perfect fifth, there's your G, this is the key of one sharp. And the note that we sharp is the seventh degree of this scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We sharp this note, we sharp from F to F sharp. So the key of G is all these white notes, but we get to the F note, and now that F is sharped, okay? Now, the next key, the key of D, we walk up from G to the fifth degree of the scale. One, two, three, four, five. That's a perfect fifth. So here's our D. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue playing that F sharp that was um, in the G scale, but we're gonna add another sharp to it. And we're gonna add the seventh degree of this scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, we're not gonna play a C anymore. Now it's gonna be a C sharp. So the key of two, sharps, the key of D has F sharp and it has a C sharp. Okay, now proceeding on from D, let's go up to the fifth degree of the D scale. One, two, three, four, five. Now this is an A. This is what we're gonna be working on today. So we play the two sharped notes that were before. We're gonna play the F sharp and the C sharp, but we're also gonna play the seventh degree of this A scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, that's a G, now it's gonna be a G sharp, because key of A is the key of three sharps. So here's the sharps in order. The first sharp is F sharp, second is C sharp, and then the third is G sharp. There's a pattern here emerging, I hope you notice, and um, so, the A scale is three sharps. Let's move on to exercise B. Exercise B is where we play the A scale one octave and back with both hands. And that takes two measures to do. Then we're gonna walk back up, A being our outside notes, the lowest and the highest notes. But the second time up and back, we're only gonna play two sharps. 
which are the sharps that are mentioned in the key of D, F sharp and C sharp. Then the third two measures, we're going to still have A to A, up and back one octave, but this time we're only going to play one sharp, which is F sharp. All right? And then the last time we're going to go up and back from A to A with all white notes, and that's the key of C. So I'm doing this just to get you used to thinking in terms of a scale of three sharps as opposed to one sharp or no sharp, because ultimately I think in the long run we want to start transitioning at, away from thinking, okay, a certain chord's being played, I need to play a certain scale. Now a certain chord's being played, now I gotta select notes from a different scale. I think ultimately in the long hand, if we can adopt kind of a shorthand approach to our scales, instead of thinking A scale with three sharps, forget the A scale part of it, we're just gonna now be playing this, this scale of three sharps. Then we're gonna to move to two sharps, then one sharp. As long as we know if it's only one sharp, it's gotta be this note. If it's two sharps, it's gotta be these two notes. And if it's three sharps, it's these three notes. All right, so that's gonna come into play more and more as you learn more scales. We'll either be thinking of the scales in terms of how many sharps, or around on the other side of the circle of fifths, how many flats. Okay, here's the exercise, exercise B. Okay, now it probably feels a little bit odd playing a D scale which starts and ends on A. Regardless of where you start your scale on, it's, it's, the, it's the scale of D major if you're playing F sharp and C sharp. No matter where you start on the keyboard, if it has three sharps, we're playing the, we're playing the A major scale. Okay, now on exercise C, this is kind of similar to the other one, but now we're going to be going up two octaves. And after two measures, uh, we're going to transition to two sharps. So we're going to start out in the key of A, and A is going to be our outside two notes from here to here. And we're going to start out the first two measures going up is going to be three sharps. And then after two measures, we're going to transition to the key of two sharps which is these two notes. And then once two measures is done, we're gonna transition to the key of one sharp, which is this note. And then after two measures of that, we're gonna conclude with the key of no sharps and no flats. It looks and sounds like this. Okay, now you might be wondering, uh, why is this even important? Why should I do this? Well, the reason being, uh, a lot of times when you're playing from chord to chord, you need to change the scales you're working in. And that's not only for soloing or doing riffs, but it also is for accompanying. For instance, let's say we're playing a D major seven. Well, I can play a D major scale But then, next thing you know, we're playing a G7. Well, a G7, I'd play this scale. And no matter where you are, you gotta get used to changing your scale, uh, even if it's in the middle of you know, a song. So the point of these exercises is to get you used to changing the scale you're working in, no matter what point you're in, in a scale or a riff or a solo or whatever. 
Okay, so that's going to be it for today's lesson. Now take a look at the ear training examples also. I want you to play them and sing the scale degrees along with them. Hopefully this will lead to you just on your own picking out certain scales, certain degrees of scales, getting used to how they sound, and also get used to picking out melodies by scale degree. Okay, so we're not going to do that in this lesson. It's all printed out for you. It's work that you have to do on your own. So also, I want to remind you that um, all these tips and tricks you're learning from everybody online, they're great. But if you're really serious about progressing as quickly and efficiently as possible as a pianist, you'll do yourself a big favor by getting a teacher or contacting me online. Um, you're not going to progress as fast if you don't have a private coach. And a private coach can catch things that you're just not going to catch. And the only thing worse than the trouble it takes and the time to learn something, it's doubly troublesome when you have to unlearn something that you learned wrong in the first place that could have been prevented by the right teacher. Okay, so that's it for today's lesson, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.